with this uh, yeah, let's get started with our first speaker for today dr koti sir um what to say about him a, a lot of introduction needs to be given uh, but from my side let me try to provide you a very very brief introduction uh, he is the author of uh, pragmatic agility uh, india achievers award for 2020 in edutech and he has a lot of uh, credentials to his page he has over 20 plus years of experience uh, in in agile industry and uh, i am also one of his uh, you know trainees as part of devops session and uh, he is also having uh, you know he is a trained spc and authorized instructor from icp acc is a nlp coach is a phoenix project simulation trainer and he is a certified uh, spc which i have already called out he is a scrum at scale certified and there are a lot of other uh, certifications under his belt people who are interested can uh, quickly check his linkedin profile and he is six sigma black belt certified and also he has done his phd in management from jnt i think th th this is uh, you know there's lot more introduction that we can uh, see from his side so handing it over to koti sir Excellent. Thank you so much, my friend, and really appreciate that kind words. I hope everybody able to hear me. Yes. Can somebody wave? Okay, good. Excellent. Yes, yes, we can hear. Yes, you. yes, yes. We and can hear uh, I, I cannot enable my video. Is there any restriction, or it's okay without video? I can talk. Are you facing some issues while making it? Yeah, on? it says it says uh, you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. You need to enable me, I believe. Even I am happy to speak without that, but I can share my screen before yeah. to fix that. Okay, I hope you can see my screen as well. Yeah. Excellent. Good. If you can fix, just let me know. I can enable my video. Otherwise, that's fine. In the interest of time we should get started good so thank you eric for that nice uh, kick off the event here uh, in this evening in india time appreciate that and a good uh, evening afternoon morning i don't know good day wherever you are joined so i am dr koti and uh, as uh, my friend uh, <clears throat> sarat mentioned a quick snapshot so i am working currently with uh, uh, garanto as an executive director and also i'm advised to empiric management solutions and i've been uh, in industry as you mentioned two decades plus in fact three decades one decade into indian air force and then into the it world here and let me check this if it is working here mm, sir you should be able to turn on your video now with the other panelists as well okay and uh, okay perfect i hope you can see my some face now not sure it's coming or not but i enabled my video here not yet so not sure i enabled but it is not coming up i am not sure but uh, i mean technical glitch good let's move on um, So I've been working in various capacities uh, in various organizations. Uh, currently working with JCA for the SAP implementation. Worked with many banks and including PayPal, Standard, and I was working with United Technologies for a small stint and then United Health Group. So I have experience in a few domains like healthcare, banking, and other stuff. Uh, and today I'm here to just share my experience, uh, what I did in the last one decade at least from a coaching perspective. Till since it is a a uh, coaches summit i thought i'll bring some of my experience what i did what i felt whatever uh, i can contribute something back here to the community so in this process today uh, the goal is to understand in three bits quickly in the interest of uh, time available here i think i have about 35 minutes or so if we lose some question hour so let's talk about why what and how right this is what uh, i am interested in to talk about in terms of this uh, business agility or enterprise agility or pragmatic agility i think everything is agility today even people are talking about personal agility so life is all about agility that's the bottom line 
so why what how in the organizations what you are working on is what i am going to talk the very first thing uh, a small video i would like to play here just let me run it and see if you are able to get there I, th I figure 75% to you, Panama, and 25% divided between the five of us. Yida, Crowbar, myself, Tom, and the baby. That makes 5% for each one of us. Ah, uh, 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 Billy, you're cheating yourself. If there's 25% divided among the five of you, that's 14% apiece. Oh, no, listen, Pa. I, I wouldn't cheat you. You know I wouldn't. Now, look. Look here. I'll show you. Let me rub this out here. And now, 25 divided by 5 is 5. You see, you, 5 won't go into 2, will it? No. But 5 goes into 25 five times, you see? No, you're wrong, Billy. Now, now I'm pretty good mathematician. Now, 5 into 25 five won't go into two will it? no but five goes into five once now we didn't use the two before so we bring it down here now five into 20 goes four times there you are five into 25 14. no look pa now, let me prove it to you now by modification uh five times five Five times five is twenty-five. Really, I'm surprised you're learning. Huh? I'm surprised that you're learning. Now I'll show you. Five times fourteen is twenty-five. Five times four is twenty. Five times one is five. Twenty-five. That's it. No, no. Look, Ma. Look, you're wrong there because I'll prove it to you. We'll put down four, five fourteens here. 14, 14, 14, there. Now, now I'll prove to you by addition that, that 5 14s is not 25. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. 21, Wait. 22, 23, 24, 25. There you are. Better brush up, Billy. I don't want to see you boys cheated. Okay. That's a little story. I hope everybody got it more than me speaking anymore about it. This is the reality of the story today, right? So the biggest pain we are facing is uh, making people understand when you have certain baggage carrying in your life from your experience or other patterns, what you are undergone. Now, if you don't want to change, I think nothing will help. It does not matter what kind of facility we are talking about. Nothing is going to work. Only it works when you are ready to understand and open to get what's going around you and what it means to get there. That's what uh, that uh, quick stuff there. Now, the biggest problem otherwise what I have seen from people is not understanding that fundamental difference about these three items here. What is translation, what is transition, and what is transformation? I think most of the organization pain is claiming we are all transforming while not knowing whether we are really translating a process or we are transitioning from one state to other state. So I think uh, those uh, low matured organizations thinking doing some kind of translation, a process moving here and there, changing some process or going to a point A to point B feeling like we are doing a big kind of transformations. I think the real transformation is all about how do you bring the dramatic changes in the form it appear. It becomes a real outcome, not a kind of a transformation what you can showcase on presentations or kind of conferences, right? You have to do something outcome orientation, which can really you get a feel and sense and outcome and outcome orientation kind of. Now, another biggest problem what I have seen is uh, adoption and maturity. Now, adoption is uh, anybody can do, climbing by sending some people for some trainings and making sure that you know you are having some time boxes to do something somehow. Everybody can claim we have adopted as well. When it comes to maturity, I'm not sure how many people can really claim we are mature or to what extent. So 
it is all about maturity more than adoption. If you say my organization is trained 1000 people in one month, who cares? If you say we have uh, everybody transformed to Scrum, everybody is doing planning, so who cares? But what should speak is your outcome again. The maturity is all about how do you reflect in culture, in your DNA. Again, connecting back to your outcomes. If the things are not outcome based, it will be still output orientation. And one team working great does not mean your organization is really transformed. So maturity is what matters at the end of the day. It's not about adoption. And this is the feature. What uh, many service is talking, if you go to Gartner, if you go to um, BCG, if you go to McKinsey, across the globe, nowadays people running behind this mantra called ABC. AI, artificial intelligence, you all know what chart GPT is going on around us in the last one month. Big data is there quite for some time. Cloud is the way of life going forward for, for many reasons of post-COVID situation. So, so we cannot escape from this ABCs if we want to move forward in this digital disruption. So be mindful that what we are uh, doing in this area in your context again, of course. And then let's talk about what, what is this uh, agility transformation is all about. So far, just I was trying to cover why from that mindset to where the world is going. Now it comes to what, this is in principle what I felt, uh, business agility is all about uh, the business value, how you can create in the shortest possible time, which can sustain, of course, which can have some consistency. And in that process, we cannot afford to compromise on the quality or we cannot compromise on the people uh, happiness, right? So we should maintain all of that. We should go to the market at the earliest possible in the more quality way. That's what very, very important. Of course, in working that fashion, iterative incremental is the quite obvious thing. At what scale you're going to do is a different question. The goal may be not at low cost in the beginning, but in the long run, that could be a byproduct from the business agility. Uh, I think Eric is mentioning about uh, even enterprise agility as a next step uh, from business agility on that uh, evolutionary versus the revolutionary kind of stuff. Of course, this can go on and on to the extent what you wanted to do in your organization. Now, uh, as for me, these are the three kind of uh, 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 cyclic process here, business agility transformation. So we need to do this in iterative and incremental fashion as well. You cannot go and start your organization in a big bang wave overnight. Nothing is going to work for that matter. So you have to be really careful about how you are introducing in your organization and also make sure that you are taking care of all these aspects. It's not able, it's not about uh, some of the organizational changes, doing some kind of structure, saying flat organization or doing some other kind of stuff. It may or it may not make sense. So what you must understand from uh, this aspect is how do you really reflect your behaviors from the DNA from an organizational standpoint of view? How do you make organization more agile and lean thinking people? And how do you adopt the practices? And how do you make sure that everybody in the organization is competent enough to get there? It does not matter what is that, uh, that competency it requires based on their functional skills, right? So there is agility for everybody. It does not matter IT division, operations division, procurement, finance, HR, sales. Anybody and everybody has to be thinking as well. Otherwise, it will go for a toss. It will be still suboptimized. So then when it comes to the, uh, the next approach, what you are going to take from a transformation standpoint of view, you need to be careful in terms of taking care of organizational transformation. How do you bring this top-down approach, right? So you cannot make uh, bottom-up, while bottom-up is equally important in terms of competency, until unless your leadership team is not convinced and not approving and not keeping their skin in the game, that's the bottom line. It's not about throwing some money to get something automated process, right? It doesn't work. They have to be part of the game and they must lead the organization. They must lead the change. There is no second thought about it. And they need to be clearly defining the policies. Sometimes I have seen recently talking to somebody, our policy does not allow to do this. Then you need to change the policy, right? You cannot do the same thing and expect different results. And there is a, a lot of things an organization can rethink the way they work today, the way they operate today, that can change the game. Without this, 
what ever you do how many people you train how many people get hired nothing will work maybe still sub optimization i would say then of course you need to really get into the process adaptation because we can define so many things we can define so many processes we can talk about engineering maturity and everything at the end of the day if you don't do those practices you don't mature them in action nothing will happen everybody talks about uh, test first development and test driven development i when i speak to 100 people 99 people says what it is and even it's a kind of greek and latin to somebody even today so continuous integration happens at times okay continuous deployment sometimes not continuous release or on demand release not all these things are really done well in organizations the problem is how do you mature the right practices to understand the right things how do you shift up the mentality all the way from the result requirements how do you involve the people how do you make people part of accountability is what matters then personal transformation is another important thing without this nothing will work so it is at the end of the day people who does all the great work so how people you are going to develop how do you make them competent enough how do you create some slack in the system how do you empathize with them so these are the certain important things i personally felt with a great organizational mindset adopting those practices through personal competency and agility probably that's going to possible otherwise everything is sub optimization as i always say now you have to address all these three aspect for an organizational change if you want to sustain and you need to understand the j curve what happens when you start changing the transformations you need to really understand performance can go down but you need to prepare for that because the results are going to overwhelm you if you give up in that patient curve of organizational change you are gone nobody is going to help you then the problem with the transformation is people think we need to adopt agile right that's what i mentioned in the beginning adoption of agile is not a goal for anybody if i am not wrong but i have seen in many cases from my experience now what is our goal actually to help us or our customers to deliver better solutions that's what our customers are looking for how can you make my solutions better i can you help me work applications working better which can help us to move for forward in our own business context so again if we say that we have so many people trained you know we have that many teams composed of stable teams and all they don't care customers want a better solution for them how do you do is something your integrity is but the goal is again not claiming alone adaptation how do you bring that value to the customer is what matters right and everything boils down to the business outcomes at the end of the day when you create a better solutions it's a win win situations for everybody now the question is how quickly to talk about by the way this is a agile coaches summit kind of thing and i am very crazy and passionate about writing lot of background names i will show couple of background names at the end of the session these are the two important things i would like to call out which was published in my book called pragmatic agility so i just out of crazy thinking what is agile what is coach and then how to put some kind of things by understanding the ground reality so people have so many models out there whatever you call grow models to xyz models right so i simply said okay if you are really a coach you need to assess the situation you need to set the goals you need to implement you need to learn and expand your ambitions about targets that's simply way of looking at agile for me as a coach you need to connect with the people you need to observe you need to advise them you need to confirm you need to harvest further so these are the couple of simple model if you love them you can go and start practicing if you have more questions let's talk offline then with that approach of one thing or other we all take an approach of a coaching aspect right we don't just go and talk to the people you pick a model of your choice from your experience you start to accelerate in the journey to help people to realize their own potential now these are very powerful books what i found uh, out of action how leaders bridge the gaps that is the biggest problem today the latest book of uh, john p cotter again dual operating system accelerate as a funny crazy thing accelerate there is a separate book also by somebody he has kept the same thing in a different ip why is it enough accelerate and then age of agile very powerful about uh, supporting the networks uh, 
Another very interesting book by Dr. Mick Kirsten is Project to Product Mentality. From his last one decade of research, he has put this book very simplified manner. How do you start thinking about products, not like projects? And Team of Teams is uh, one of the powerful like this journal uh, Stanley talking about uh, how do you really respect the teams and how do you create any organization from a team of teams perspective. So we need to really foster these cultures and we have to enable the people uh, to work innovatively in the organization. And we have to really make teams are aligned from end-to-end -end work point of view, not their own team's perspective. So you can make some centralized policy makings, you can make some centralized initiatives and strategies, that's fair enough, but then you need to transform the leadership to get there. So these are some references for you, but again, you may have a whole wealth of wisdom. You can leverage your experience and these things are always uh, a good pointers and reference for you to move forward. Then, this is purely from my experience. If you want to start this uh, agile or agility transformation, people are way more happy to call agile more than agility. I'm not going to talk about that agility and agile now. So go with the flow, agile transformation. So how it starts? So obviously training, you need to educate the people. Without educating, nothing will happen. You need to coach, you need to collaborate across the people, use tools and techniques to leverage in this fast-facing digital disruption, especially post-COVID, tools plays vital role. And assessments, that will help you to move forward. And then you have this uh, little bit of strategically starting the game. Leadership transformation could be one more thing. And then, of course, skill and staffing assessment wherever you go. Understand the gaps and competencies, what you can do. Have a clear plan and charter. Start with team transformations. Don't go big bang. Apply tools and techniques to scale up. Pilot agile. Showcase the result. Figure out the next steps with the best approaches what to learn. Then you can go and do the agility at scale at whatever the level you wanted to do. That's where your enterprise transformation comes from. Now, of course, I can talk about this, this slide for entire day also, right? But the goal is not to that, just to give some snippets here from my experience. Then the transformation journey. So first of all, you need to have a powerful communication. Without having communication, people will ask you to get lost when you go and talk to people, right? A very, very important thing you must understand. Have a clear buy-in and plan. Sometimes I see agile coaches struggling. Why am I hired? What is being asked? What was being asked in the interview? What is being asked now? What JD? Your struggle is always to make leadership buy-in. Your struggle is always to convince leadership. This is the biggest pain what I have seen people doing, including me. I was, I was not no any exception anymore. I was figuring out and I was breaking my head all of my half of the time to convince people without knowing where they had. So communication is the key. Let the communication flow from the top down. Guys, this is what the need. This is the company business. We need to do that. Figure out a pilot. Again, don't showcase a lot of case studies, customer stories. Nobody cares because context counts at the end of the day. What works for somebody may not work for you. How do you figure that out? Do your pilot to get the buy-in and confidence of the leadership and customers. Then figure out how do you really transform the roles in a more evolutionary phase, not on a revolutionary basis overnight. Train and further coachings and implementation can help you. That showcase to the rest of the organization what are the possibilities for us. Then you can, of course, always scale up to the next level by creating some community of practices which can help you to leverage your internal talent rather than running around the industry. That makes a lot of sense for you to go and collaborate, cross-pollinate and work for organization. Of course, you can go beyond and uh, further different levels of transformations. Again, don't be inclined to any framework, any school of thoughts. You first figure out what is your context, what makes sense. Don't criticize in this process any frameworks. For scaling, there are 1,000 frameworks available today. So don't run behind the buzz of the industry. You look for your context. Choose what makes sense for your context to scale up. When you have a basic... Uh, Hygiene in the system and basic maturity and the culture, then slowly it will evolve over a period of time. So it takes time. Don't think that you send people to two days of training and next day morning miracles will happen. It is just impossible. You have to have patient enough. You need to have a clear time and space to get, see the success, right? Again, success depending upon how do you different, different question. So waterfall to agile transformation, uh, some of the role mappings, I just talked about here in the interest of uh, 
you again from my own experience how do you see the requirements in the waterfall and agile and what is changing a release and milestone base to the uh, more frequently how testing is changing the way the landscape of the you know built in quality proactively what happens to scope everything fixed there the only thing variable in agile is scope that's where we are helping our customers to keep it very open and work towards a solution what makes sense as you all customer involved all the time not at the end our focus is more value unlike the schedule driven it's mostly a kind of uh, centralized in fact there is a typo agile is all about decentralized waterfall is about centralized which is not a good sign to move forward now maturity point of view i was talking about uh, here are some of my uh, experience again don't care about uh, lagging metrics much don't depending upon leading metrics too much so i always call these things as outcome metrics focus on outcomes which are predominantly a kind of uh, leading indicators at times people call but at least don't measure vanity metrics because you can measure anything don't measure that's meaningless and merely wastage of time if a metric is not useful for you to make some decisions please drop that metric so measure what makes sense that's what the bottom line business value of course people struggle to figure out what is business value first you try to educate yourself understand what is the business value before you measure then that becomes the ultimate goal of customer's value time to market is key because if you go with the less integrity you promise today go after one week nobody cares by then you are outdated in the marketplace you are not helping your customers escape defect is the reflection of the quality of the people you cannot just measure you cannot claim that okay in this sprint we have fixed 200 defects who cares if you have 10 defects escape to the customer that is the biggest problem it does not make any sense for me requirement volatility index i have seen people crying around okay customer is coming back with every day changes then that's what they are looking for otherwise why do they care about sale i have seen some organization measuring this the more requirements or the product backlog items are changing from the day you started implementing in every iteration that is the power of help you are doing to the customer you really look for the requirement volatility index index you be happy when they ask for more changes that's how you are helping them if you say no sorry they will figure out somebody so be aware of that feature usability index everybody is creating features but how many of them are used how much you are taking care of that how are you calculating that that's another important thing what they can use is what makes sense so that requires lot of again principle number 10 of agile manifesto simplicity happiness index this is my personal metric i did as part of my phd work happiness index is one of the most important thing again there are systems to support if you don't know again you can connect with me how do you calculate this and all there are many ways as long as your intentions are right to calculate people say it is very subjective of course we can measure the subjectivity also net promoter score from employees perspective also equally important like customer make sure that enps and cnps both are equally important and that will help you to move forward these are some again uh, <clears throat> transformation challenges from my experience i think everything is self explanatory what you see on the screen so our we need to be more growth mindset right and we need to have more product thinking and we need to be more focusing on the people than process maturity is important principles are very good for the practices and again practices are better than preaching stories and you must lead and help people to actually trigger the intrinsic motivation don't run behind carrot and sticks business and of course value is more important than velocity you cannot enforce anything in the agile you can just enable or empower the people try to think about that reactive things does not work anymore in this fast pacing world you have to be proactive enough these are certain important things if you can start thinking about coming out of your fixed mindset and all these abilities of project and process and preaching and management probably it can change the game it is difficult but you need to attempt so some of the things again uh, uh, some uh, solutions potentially which can help you you must have a compelling vision don't force fit anything to the people uh, educate the leadership team first that's the first fundamental pillar and without which nothing will happen think about uh, long term short term goals don't go for big bang groom the internal talent my sincere advice don't run behind industry to get experts out of their experience they claim 50% will not be really useful for you 
people can claim anything. Rather, look inside. Who is your talent? Who understands your ecosystem better? Who can make all wonders for you? Respect the people in the organization more than running in the industry. Make all functions enable like agile, agile thinking people, not only IT people, all functions, procurement, sales, marketing. Otherwise, they will sell everything what you are not building. You will surprise, right? So baseline measure, create some meaningful metrics, create a kind of oneness in the organization, one team, one company, shared responsibility. Engineering maturity is very, very important. Nowadays, people are talking about DevOps and beyond. SRE also important. Create a good telemetry about stakeholders, what reporting they need. So bottom line is inspect and adopt. There is nothing like uh, uh, without inspect, anything can happen. And the further, you need to have the transparency in that system. You need to have the courage and trust with the people, right? So then post-COVID, what I found, uh, even I published in my book also, interestingly, it was COVID time I have written a book. What could happen post-COVID kind of little bit of uh, forecasting. You need to uh, charter the new ways of working. Uh, you need to show trust in the people because they are behind the cameras like we are right now. Uh, then you need to still trust, right? And uh, you have to make a lot of uh, rules changed, policy changed. And you need to really thinking about the new ways of working in this remote world. Once upon a time, work from home was a nightmare. Now work from office is a nightmare. Both things are the both thanks to COVID to make the entire world realize all these extreme possibilities, which are otherwise people were never thinking about it, right? And of course, respect the people at home, their, their, you know, their privacy is, we you know, don't know what is their problems. We need to be very, very empathetic about that. And we use tools, digital space, tools and technology can bridge all the gap. And again, all the people misconceptually use the principle of face-to-face -face in the Agile Manifesto, unfortunately. Now everybody realized in-person is not only face-to-face, -face, you can be face-to-face -face anytime, anywhere. Even before COVID, some people leveraged very well tools and techniques. Now, at least it has become a business imperative. Now, everybody started doing that. So make sure that uh, you change all the policies in the interest of the post-COVID. Give some full empowerment, autonomy by trusting your people. Otherwise, just impossible to sustain. Last but not the least, go with the compliance with the government rules and regulations and statutory guidelines. Don't rush to uh, call people to offices for no reason or just follow the statutory or guidelines of the government bodies wherever you're operating. That can make you to be compliant, to be sustained in the business. Otherwise, you may need to shut down as well. Then practical advice to conclude, um, <clears throat> gather the data. Don't go to perceptual basis or watermelon kind of reportings looking very green outside and very uh, red deep inside. Gather the data, value the data, collect them from the system, do the feasibility study. And you need to plan your transformation strategy. You have to train the people, which is the main ingredient in the transformation to educate. Then implement SS coach. Finally, you can improve to sustain and accelerate over a period of time. These are some highlighter points for you. How do you start the game? So some closing thoughts. I know we are having about 10 to 12 minutes more. Let me take five minutes to conclude 10 minutes, maybe some questions. Some of the things uh, I would like to call out here, there's an opportunity. I hope everybody is. Uh, Getting connected to one of the famous uh, uh, stuff in the Agile world, which has taken the birth in 2001, February 9th to 11th, after that 17 great pioneers brainstorming, right? I hope everybody guessed it now, Agile Manifesto. So I was uh, really looking at recently what these people are doing. And out of all these, this guy, uh, Pete Beadle is no more, RIP. And rest of the people are still surviving and contributing and giving their own opinions at this point in time. Many people ask them, why are you not revisiting? There's one of the person, John Kahn, said, we don't need to revisit. Just people need to realize and understand even today. Some people said, people are, these are all the quotes what you see on my screen. The same 17 people said whatever in 2001. This is their latest statements of late. Very latest, as good as one year or last year kind of the statements. Now you can see that, what is what is that going on here? They said Agile in name only. I know models, there are people. Agile does not cure your incompetency. And they can help you to make some better estimates or accurate estimate. It is mostly adaptive, not predictive. And of course, 
think of the agile manifesto as a call to action in a point of time and not script of how to behave it was a moment not an era this is what any powerful statement given by by sutherland jeff sutherland right co-founder of scrum what do you all believe nowadays agile has become overly decorated you call again all utilities and all people started doing many things calling what are they are doing and of course another thing if you look at the bottom of the four values this is again a statement by one of uh, this uh, others right i think individual and interactions or process and tools is often used as a club to rule out uh, discussions of process and tools which is too bad in 2001 that was making sense then what is said in 2015 the reverse is true and of course post covid it's reverse only possible i hope you are getting my message here and i also personally found two things need to be changed in the agile manifesto if i got a magic wand replace that software with solutions project with product then that can fit for anybody on the planet today the biggest problem is people think it is for software people only not necessarily right entire world is using left and right oil and natural gas and telecommunication media nasa you name anybody people are doing manufacturers not only it but there is a little bit glitch when people are talking about this i thought if you can replace do, these two things it can change the real game last but not the least david one of the uh, other here whom you see uh, top row last but one he said agile is dead not anymore and you can look at his pragmatic uh, video as well you will understand more games now uh, time is more valuable than money my friends so me be mindful this is what my, from my experience in pets i just kept in the interest of sharing and apply system thinking otherwise local optimization and global disaster nothing will happen that is the true business ability or enterpriseality we are talking about it it is amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit by harry unfortunately every organization is running behind this credit story only right you do somebody else will claim and somebody else do you claim it's vice versa it is all political affair in the organizations of the corporates unfortunately you need to get out of that mesh if you can get out of that mesh you can see all wonders happening for your organization then uh, another important thing is from my own uh, experience estimations or guesstimates do not do our engineering and history and research shows that when you spend 50% time your accuracy of estimate is close to 70 to 80% if you spend the remaining rest of your life the accuracy may improve by 5% maximum or no it may degrade as well so you must have a reasonable thinking what is that we need to do in the interest of starting the game inspect and adapt learn from the past improve the accuracy because you can never be accurate and so we call them as estimates don't run behind unnecessarily with them to make them perfect good do what is working for you do not run behind frameworks or methods if you follow frameworks fair enough but don't customize till the extent you fail and then blame everything else this is another biggest problem people go on and on and on just you know fine tuning and customizing in the interest of their own comfort zone finally they say no this x does not work for us that's a crap entire world is reaping the benefit by the way it is your inability to figure out what makes sense for you but then context counts at the end of the day bottom line is do what makes sense for you why are you running behind everything already there is enough confusion by all great thought leaders in the industry is it, you have to be wise enough to choose what makes sense for you who knows tomorrow i may come with something else right so everybody want to showcase their own experience what is commit means for you as i told uh, my own wisdom context counts own it you measure and mature with integrity and trust that is the bottom line if you can really believe in these things nobody can stop from success either you or your organization then what is metrics means i usually talk to the people in most of the occasions whenever i get a time measure everything that results in customer satisfaction that is the beauty of this power metrics as a word what message hidden inside now if you ask next time question what i should measure you may have your answer whatever it makes sense which results in the customer satisfaction is what your focus should be now uh, as uh, charles darwin says 
it is not the strongest of the species that survives nor the most intelligent that survives it is the one that is the most adaptable to change period that's the bottom line so this is told ages back right agile is very new and we are doing a lot of great wonders in this space thinking all great things it does not matter what you are doing how you are doing all it's about how flexible you are how adaptable you are for the change whether you like it or not that's what it can change the game otherwise you will be out of market and we have seen enough examples i don't want to quote the examples who are out of market in the recent past one decade or one or two years also right again thanks to covid to make people understand what is the game of survivability and fitness for purpose so these are just my promotional stuff from our companies guarantors and empirics upcoming stuff happening but that doesn't matter how can i help in the last 5 minutes what i have thank you so much for patient listeners and the great opportunity here thank thank thanks so much koti sir for for a wonderful session uh, initially we have asked uh, all the speakers uh, to share the key takeaways from the session you are absolutely to the point you shared your transformation experiences business agility you asked uh, you shared what needs to be learned and what needs to unlearn that's a great session from your side now let's let's uh, allow the participant to ask some question participants please share uh, raise your hand if you want to ask any questions in between we have few questions uh, in the q and a section let me go ahead sai durga prabhu she is asking like what as per you is the current state of enterprise agility and where do you see it going so again to be honest with you with all due respect enterprise agility is a new buzz while the conceptually it is a great thing to be done as eric mentioned very clearly we need to understand what is the agility we are talking about how do you start transforming from a team agility to business agility to enterprise agility so it is a, a kind of nomenclature even if you ask me to put before team agility i will add personal agility which is the current buzz of the industry right so how do you bring a person personal transformation to the team transformation to the organization transformation to go beyond so basically these are the layers my personal take is based on your maturity i would assess that right so if you are doing very good adoption on top of adoption very good maturity and if you are on a maturity levels if you can scale up to a different on a scale of 1 to 10 if you claim yourself you are doing a reasonably at 8 to 9 in terms of the business outcomes you can claim that so how your whole organization is transformed how that value is being looked at from a customer's point of view from those outcome metrics what i mentioned about it if you can create a small kind of those metrics and analysis and you can assess yourself the maturity and the business results can lead to scale to climb where you are if i make a scale of agility scale starting from personality scale to the enterprise scale that maturity should tell you where you are that's what my take on that great sir i think wish wants to uh, ask a question wish i have unmuted you please try to ask question yeah uh, thank you praveen uh, yes so uh, my question is around uh, you know uh, on the lines of you know if uh, we ignore uh, who gets the credit a lot uh, is done right on the same lines how exactly uh, do we address the appraisals like this end of the day it's a collective work team work and a sprint goal but still yes. we have to measure and appraise uh, people uh, in the team uh, yes so how uh, yeah Uh, this question is not surprise to me uh, every alternate day this question is asked and every alternate my sessions i talk about this also uh -huh. if you are interested please talk to me offline because this is a big thing you need to understand not uh, expiring in uh, 30 seconds or 1 minute certainly, there is something certainly. called uh, um, personal assessment framework system what i created when i was working in optum at a capacity of agile coach as a practice head i created my own stuff you may be surprised maybe if one of my team members or coaches working with me joined this call sometimes they watched in some of the conference also i never given any rating to my people i never given any rewards awards to my people which means they pick themselves how they do that i created a very simple framework you decide and you measure you award period 
don't call me about your ratings and bell curves and performance bonuses very simple nimble if everybody is interested to adopt things will happen again if you need not to be biased anywhere and there is no question of biasing very simple set of rules and framework you create it leave it there you empower the people to do that then nobody will question you okay why i am 2 why is 5 and x y z no questions whether you are 2 or 5 yourself is going to decide period that is the bottom line that's one aspect i did in my life but it may work for somebody it may not work for us again there are thousands of tools available on this area research is done as for me the bottom line is respect as a team you cannot get away from the organizational policies and practices as i mentioned in some of the slides what you need to do differently what policies you need to change how do you act post covid many things comes into picture right those all amalgamation can lead to a different way of life whether we can sail together or sink together there is no question that we can run faster than our slowest component in the team member right and you cannot say i am a hero i am done my programming deal done that is the whole point we are talking about why it is a collective uh, journey you need you need to have some kind of uh, what i created maybe somebody else may have created something more you need to find the ways with a open mind then everything fall in place the biggest bottleneck is the current your human capital policies the existing things are the bottlenecks for you slowly people are transforming i believe in different ways of life and i am sure very soon that will be even better awesome yes uh, thank you dr koti certainly as you mentioned i'll connect with you personally offline on this more thank you so much for and um, such an insightful session today thank you vish thank thanks vish in the interest of time we are taking two more questions we are already over running but let me shoot one more question sir how to manage agile transformation and business priorities as business deliveries always take the precedent than any transformation excellent so these are uh, not mutually exclusive or inclusive you may have a better idea when i say exclusive inclusive if you are running behind business priorities in your entire life you cannot do agility in any way if you think agility can change my business priorities and the way i look at the things today you should start thinking about agility transformation so agility transformation is not a choice anymore it is a business mandate and business objective if you want to really work great on those so called business priorities now who knows that what business priorities you are doing today how better you are doing what measures you are doing what framework you are using how do you know that what you are doing is making sense or not so business priorities every company will have that's a never ending story but how do you make better business priorities will come through agility if you understand that simple fact and recognize that way of life slowly you will start injecting and again you need not to stop everything overnight so have that mindset and awareness again start indulging into as i mentioned a small pilot you continue with your kind of priorities the way of life you take a small pilot and experiment it that will prove the right things then you can slowly get the buy in and scale up in the enterprise thank you sir one last question um how can i coach leadership who hired me for agile transformation but don't want to change sorry uh, can you please repeat the question how can i coach leadership who hired me for agile transformation but they don't want to change yeah for that uh, you need to come to my nlp session <laughs> how to coach people on a personal capacity so i am just kidding see basically this is the biggest problem i told already right i have beaten enough with that approach and of course uh, because i have some courage i quit some jobs and uh, not many jobs i did in my life anyway hardly two companies here and there but then see you the bottom line is organizations are hiring coaches to claim that they have agile coaches they have some competency they are also doing agile 50% companies are doing that to showcase the head counts unfortunately in the remaining 50% hardly 10% also not doing the proper coaching everybody has here love to coach but we are not allowed to coach unfortunately now again people don't understand what is coaching what is mentoring what is training what is facilitation what is counseling there are many stances of the life now agile coach has to carry all of that thing right and in the interview you are looked at only one thing as a solution accelerator which does not make sense so basically my personal take is use your toolkit like some nlp technique or some other techniques what you learn in your life 
pick one of the model to make them aware first place second thing use some cartesian questions guys what will happen if you do this what will not happen if you do this what will not happen if you don't do this and what will happen if you don't do this then that four questions will open up the mindset of the people who are ahead you they know now what they need to do that four compelling questions you can use as a simple toolkit from my experience that will change the game probably otherwise again inspect and adopt last but not the least look for the opportunities where your competency is respected don't stuck somewhere and don't regret that's my advice all right in the interest of time one last question from sonal sonal you want to ask a quick question okay good evening everyone and good evening uh, so uh, that was a very uh, insightful session and my question is uh, my team or or the people around in my team tends to always get into blame game uh, we try to coach and that the team should focus on delivery and value but uh, they don't so it's it's always dev versus a qa uh, hence repetitively being telling them we are one team and in agile it, it is nothing like dev and qa how uh, i mean how to deal with such solutions i mean how to bring in people agility uh, i think so again uh, thank you for asking that uh, see at the end of the day as a leaders as a team leads our act of leadership everywhere is important everything start with the education socialization and showing the big picture telling the purpose why we are doing what we are doing if we can slowly navigate around those things by enabling the people by providing enough autonomy and empowerment things can change i have seen very closely and it is not easy on the day one so but then the day one ends right after 24 hours new day starts new ways starts a new motivation starts how do you first you understand my personal request is whenever we are talking about something need to change what abilities we have that's what we say in the coaching as a first thing what is our personal competency and ability to transform the things around us once we have that clarity take that baton to the next level by helping people to realize by showcasing with some analogies some examples and telling them they are part of the game without them you know there is no value at all slowly that mindset shift and empowering the people can change but don't force fit anything force fitting does not make sense taking that navigational step with some kind of personal trainings and coachings can change the game yeah thanks thanks koti sir for the great answer with this we are going to end uh, koti sir session unfortunately with the crunch of time so thanks again once again koti sir um for your you. session with thank this uh, thank you yeah please go No, no, no. If anything else, guys, shoot an email to our friends. SS Gurus will come back to you. We will answer the questions in what other way we can do that. We need to respect the time box. Apologies for a few minutes over. And with that, I would say thank you and have a great time, everybody. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much. With this, uh, uh, we have ended our first speaker session by Dr. Ko.